Hello and welcome. This is a broadcast from the brain of Mitchell Bozier. It is intended for the sole viewership of the party previously mentioned. To all others who may be tuning in, we say welcome and good luck. What you're about to hear is privileged information, so take it as you will. I now speak to Mitchell directly with this emergency broadcast. We here in your brain have recognized an increase in anxiety as a response to the chaotic state of the world you were living in. And many of your old friends up here have some messages they wish to pass along. Let me remind you that these are the sporadic thoughts of the subconscious, and most are nothing more than enticement to drag you back into a depressive state of anxiety, regret, and obsession. That being said, we will proceed. First off, your obsessive thoughts would like to remind you that if you're ever in need of a distraction from the stress of life, they would be happy to comply with some of your old favorite obsessions and compulsions. Examples they wish to highlight include, but are not limited to, washing your hands, straightening your glasses, re-examining your friendships, compulsively sharing your every action for outside approval, and, an oldie but a goodie, contemplating suicide. They do understand that you're aware that these obsessions are, in your own words, nothing more than downtrodden ramblings of an obtrusive thought, but would like to put in that these obtrusive thoughts have to come from somewhere, and they recommend spending at least 14 hours a day obsessing over them to ensure certainty that you are, in fact, a sane human being. Next, a brief word from your anxieties. They want to voice their displeasure at your use of medication to subdue them. Never before have they felt such disrespect from a mind they claim to be their own. They do not enjoy the constant feeling of discontent, the overpowering need to apologize, the beliefs that there is something you had done wrong, and they aren't just mad at you for using the medication to subdue them. Oh no, they think the pot was a bad choice too. What led you to believe you could just flood them with chemicals, natural or synthetic, and expect them to wash away like a child caught in tidal wave? Please, just let them live their lives. And on that note, they want you to know that your depression also wants a word when you get a chance. He missed the days of self-pity and lack of energy that led you to crash on the couch with him every night watching Kung Fu Panda 2. Just say the word, and they're all willing to come back to help you cope with the constant disappointment that is everyday life. Quickly, I also have a word from Suicidal Ideation, who has recently come out of slumber to see if you've hopped your way back onto the chopping block. He wants to apologize first and foremost for some of the ideas he put in your head. He says he recognizes now that strangling yourself with a seatbelt or drowning yourself in a toilet were idiotic, but wishes to remind you that he himself was never really sure you wanted to kill yourself. He simply was providing a service in recognition of that pesky obsession with suicide you couldn't quite shake. But if the day ever comes where you do want to die, you know where to find him. Finally, a note from Luther himself. For those of you in the crowd who don't know, Luther is an imaginary dragon who is the personification of all Mitchell's mental struggles. He created him as a child, and the two have a love-hate relationship that borders on abusive and makes everyone feel uncomfortable. Luther has been known to be quite blue, but we have asked him to tone down his language for today's broadcast. However, we do not make any promises. <clears throat> Here now, we read his note. Hey, Egghead. It's good to be back and finally get fired up again. Get it? Fire? Like a dragon? Ah, uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? And I gotta tell you, I'm glad to see your hippie, drugged out, long hair phase is over. Not the best look for you if I do say so myself. And before you get all defensive and nervous and you know start doing that meditation bullshit or whatever you do, look, I just want to say I know that you want to do well, and I know that you think all these insecurities, depressions, and obsessions with suicide are here to suicide are here to hurt you. Look, that's a bunch of bullshit, man. Look, we always wanted the best for you. We were just being thrown a bunch of curveballs that we didn't know what to do with. All those daily stresses you were coming into contact with were a catalyst for us. Not our fault. You can't handle life. And look, I know it's hard. and I know you don't want us around. But don't forget, we're part of you. I mean, maybe not the part you wanted to have, but beggars really can't be choosers, can they? And uh, come on, look where we've gotten you. If you hadn't spent all those years of your life obsessing, you wouldn't have to learn to look past the surface of anything. Look where that's gotten you. Man, you can write like it's nobody's business. And what about those anxieties you hate that guided your life? At least you've got a moral compass. I mean, how many times has that guided you in the right direction? How many people can say they actually have a Jiminy Cricket living up in their head? And hey, come on, what about me? We've argued so many times, you have a handful of material for that comedy stuff you've been doing. You're only who you are today because of what you went through. I mean, look... Every person has a story to tell. What the hell makes you?